Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, Holy Father, bless your name in our midst. 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 Say, Lord God, that you will make yourself real unto us. And this is, Lord, the heart desire that your people, Lord God, come to the full knowledge of who you are. The portion, Lord God, that you present and give unto us, that you provide unto us. The portion of knowledge that you present and provide unto us, I pray, Lord God, that it come, Lord, that to free. I pray, Lord Jesus, that he come completely, Lord God, to be fruitful, to fresh. Let our heart and our mindset be tuned in your heart, be tuned in your mind. You taught us and you said, let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. The thought of my mind, the thought of my heart. I present them unto you so God that they be sanctified. So they be sanctified. You are able to take down the heart of the kings. You are able, Lord God, to turn around the hearts of the kings. You are able, Lord God, to turn around, Lord God, the lives of people. So I pray, God, that... You will manifest thyself in a way that is tangible. In a way that is tangible, Lord Jesus. As you have appeared unto Thomas, manifested thyself unto him in a tangible way. I pray that you manifest thyself tangibly. As you have appeared, Lord God, unto the disciple of Emmaus, in a tangible way. I pray that you manifest yourself, Lord Jesus, in a tangible way. I pray, Lord God, that the touch of your children, Lord God, will not be, Lord God, ephemeral, will not be, Lord God, a temporary touch, but it will be a permanent touch, Lord God, by the mark of your seal. By the mark, Lord God, of your seal. Let your spirit, Lord God, touch them. Let your spirit, Lord God, mark them. Let your spirit, Lord God, mark and touch them continually, permanently. I pray, Lord God, that the shift of your spirit will start bothering, Lord God, the area of the life which are still torment. I pray, Lord God, that your touch, Lord God, will start moving the area of the life which are still torment. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your touch will right now, Lord God, move and stir up the gifts that you have placed in them. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will start causing, Lord God, avalanche of, Lord God, a complete revival inside the life and the families. I cause, Lord God, the heavenly, Lord God, to open the windows, Lord God, right now upon their lives. And let the flow, Lord God, that come from thee, the right hand of thy power that is true, Lord God, to uplift and deliver, to set free and restore. I call unto it right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do something new and let the breeze of your spirit right now, let the breeze of your wind right now, let the east wind come and revive, Lord God, every dry bones at every place of their life, in the finances, in the health, in the spirit, in the prayer life, in the studies. I call unto the east wind of the spirit of God to come and give a sin new and give, Lord God, a rain in spirit. 
spirit life, Lord God. Pour out, Lord God. Impart it, Lord God. Impart it, Lord Jesus. And let it be, Lord God, in the life, Lord God, as a sweet incense, a sweet aroma, Lord God, for which they will know who you are, for which they will love who you are, for which they will run after you. They will kind, oh Lord God, and burn on fire for you, Lord God, and never quench again, and never quench again. And I call for your spirit. I call for your fire. I call for your spirit. I call for your fire. As he was in the days of Pentecost, I call and I decree that spirit. I call and I decree that fire, Lord God. Let it fall, Lord God, anew. Let it refresh them anew. Let it go candle them anew, Lord God. Burn up, Lord God, the resistance. Burn up, Lord God, the doubts. Burn up, Lord God, the doubts. Lord, I take them, Lord God, in levels that they're out yet to see and to know. To the glory of your name, let it be, Lord God, a shift. Let it be a shift in the lives, in the heart. In the walk, in the talk, let it be a shift. Put your hand on your head and say, Lord, heal my soul. Lord, heal my soul. Because there are some wounds that were made in your soul. And those wounds, regardless on how you pray, regardless on how you try, regardless on how you press, regardless on how you do, those wounds are in that soul. So you ask him right now, say, Lord, heal my soul. Lord, heal my soul because your soul needs to be renewed, be made new again, fresh as it was in the beginning, in the purity of his name, in the purity of his call, in the purity of the choice that he has placed upon thee, in the purity of the hands of God that he has stretched out unto thee. Say, Lord, heal my soul. Do your work in our lives, God. Do your work in our lives, Lord. Do your work in our lives, God. Do your work in our lives, Lord. Shake Thank you, Lord God, for all that you do. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for seeing us through. Thank you for helping us. You are true in all that you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. Bless the name of the Lord today. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for what he does. We bless him and we honor him. We acknowledge him for what he does. The word that the Lord has given today is the continue, uh, the continuation, the continuation of last Sunday. Three days to enter the promise. After you enter the promise, there are steps that you are to take to maintain the promise, to continue in the promise. Because you have to remember the promise that the Lord speaks unto you 
is also sought by the enemy. And the enemy is seeking also to destroy, steal. And he doesn't steal if you don't have. So it is your duty to learn to maintain. Hallelujah. We're going to go in the book of Joshua again. Chapter 1. And we're going to read from verse 11. Joshua chapter 1, verse 11. Hmm? Pass through the host and command the people. Say, Pass through the host and command the people saying. Prepare you victuals. Mm -hmm. For within three days he shall pass over this Jordan, mm -hmm. to go in to possess the land mm -hmm. which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Mm -hmm. And to the Reubenite and to the Gadites mm -hmm. and to half the tribe of Manasseh mm -hmm. spake to Joshua, saying, Remember the words which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But he shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Until the Lord hath given your brethren rest, as he had given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then he shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. Hallelujah. Amen. You shall make sure that you are sure that your friend, brother, neighbor, whom God has brought with you, you shall make sure to help them until they succeed. Now see, when God is blessing you, he's not blessing you so that you will only give him praise. He's blessing you so that you become, as we say, a blessing. By the way, you become a blessing is that you have to make sure that somebody else succeed. Because you cannot simply pray on people and let them go. You have to put in the effort. Put in the work. There are a type of people God will bring in your life that you need to invest time. I say, there are a type of people God will bring in your life you need to invest time. You need to dedicate time. Each one of us has somebody that God has brought in, all, in our life for something. And at the time God brought them, it was to train us, to teach us. Even when the adversary came, it was for teaching us and training us. Because through the work of the adversary, we understood the plans of God. Because the word of God said that the, what the enemy has taught for evil... Hallelujah. The enemy has thought that he took uh, uh, Joseph to slavery, but he did not know that Joseph was getting trained for the presidency. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as you think and as you see the things that are happening in your life, even if it is the enemy who has his hand inside, the Bible says that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You see here, it's two things. Those who love God and not all. The purpose God called you for is which destiny God has assigned you to enter in, to be in. Until you get there, you will not rest. 
he told to the children of Israel, he said, listen, even though you have had your portion, you cannot rest until your brother received a portion. You cannot rest until verse 15 of Joshua chapter 1. Uh, go, go, let's, let's go on verse 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. Your wives, uh -huh. your little ones, and your cattle mm -hmm. shall remain. No, let, sorry, let's go again. Verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Remember, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, uh -huh. saying, mm -hmm. "The Lord your God hath given you rest." Now listen. Sometimes people don't understand the principle of God because they will only want to hear "quote unquote" from God directly. But you see, their blessings came from God through a man. Do you, do you get that? The problem why sometimes you get stuck is because you feel that you can hear God for yourself, so therefore, there is nothing else you can hear from people. You get stuck. You feel what I'm saying? Because God speaketh through people. The proof, he became man. That's the proof. He became in the likeness like you and I. So he can speak our language. So to believe that, hey, I must only hear God for myself. I say only. I did not say you cannot. I say if you only say, no, I only hear God. I don't hear no nothing. Even when God speaks through somebody, what you do, you trash the blessings. And now you go in your closet, you pray. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, and nothing is coming, and you wonder. Well, because he spoke through someone he sent, and you rejected it. The word of God says that when he sends his people, and his people speak it, if you reject them, who you reject? He says, anything that you do to the little ones of mine, to do, you do it unto the problem is that we want to honor, worship God without honoring the people we see. It's a problem. So when you hear what God is teaching you, leading you, building you, he will always help you to understand or to know if you are available by the spirit of discernment that this is your season and this is the person is using in order to help you get there. So he tells Moses and Moses speaketh to the people and the word of God says the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. Now they can be like, well, you know, if God does not speak to me, I don't budge. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't board, move. Budge. B U D G E. The problem is, and let, let, me, let me explain very carefully so that you don't mix up what I'm saying. When God speaks it from Genesis to Revelation, He does not speak it everything to everyone. Are you what I'm saying? He does not reveal everything to everyone. Uh -uh. Can you take for me, I believe it's Oshea. Uh, no, Amos. For, for, for God does not do a thing like Amos chapter 3 something. C can you bring that for me? Amos chapter 3 somewhere. The, the, the belief that I can do all things by Christ who strengthens me does not mean that you can do it alone. So chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the, the Lord God go ahead. will do nothing, uh -huh. but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Now you got to understand this word. God himself says, I won't do anything. Until I reveal my secret to his servants, the prophets. 
But here's the problem. The people will say, well, I know God. That's true, you know God. Just like Aaron. Just like Miriam. Just like Korah. But the problem is that God makes the choice of who he wants to lead. You follow what I'm saying? If you are born in a family, you know, when you arrive, you find your father and your mother. Regardless on how you like or you don't like them, that's your father and your mother. Even if they transfer you to, uh, how we call it? No, um, like when you don't have a father, what they send you? Or orphanage? It does not make the orphanage your father and mother because you have come through one father, one mother. Are you what I'm saying? Let me explain to you. It means that if it was up to you, you won't come through them. But it's up to God. I'm trying to explain to you that the way you are born and where you are born, you cannot choose it. Can you? Even the child that is in your belly to come, his features and everything, you don't choose it. When he arrives, then you know. Because even all the sonogram they do, don't give you everything. So the Lord God is the one who chooses whosoever he wants to appoint to his people or chooses whosoever he wants to appoint to somebody in order to help the person. Now I can tell you, he can sometimes choose the wicked one. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. The problem is that you're looking for somebody you like. <laughs> you will wait long. <laughs> you must look for somebody God has chosen. It's like marriage. It's not every time you like your wife or your husband. But that's the person God has chosen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your children. It's not every time that you like what they do. But that's the children God has. When you're acting like, well, I don't like what you do. I trash you. The problem is not them, it's you. Because you cannot trash the blessing that God has given unto you. So understanding the ways of God helps the person to enter into the promise and to maintain. You do not just want to enter in. You also want to maintain. In Africa, they build roads, beautiful. And building, beautiful. And five years after, the same road and the same building becomes like a trash. Maintenance. The day of building, the mayor, the superfet mayor, the, the lieutenant mayor, the, 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 <laughs> they all come. They gather, they, they put uh, the strap and the big scissors and with a big line and they cut it. Cut, and then you see all the clam and the camera and the, the, it goes everywhere. Announcement. You take a picture of five years later. And the picture of five years earlier, when you put them together, you don't understand. <laughs> Maintain the blessings that God has given you. You know, sometimes it goes to the same with marriage. You got to maintain your marriage. Because see, if you don't maintain your marriage, you fall into familiarity. The same person that you saw in your eye of. <laughs> there is a brother, uh, um, a man of God who said, before you marry somebody, your eye of lust might see the person. <laughs> because when you see the person, even if God has spoken to you that your eye did not like the person, what, what, what will you do? So your eyes must, must, must see it. When Adam saw Eve, 
It was not in the spirit. He looked at the shape. He said, ah, this is the one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And by the time he looked, his rib was not there. He said, ah, that's my bone. <laughs> So what I'm saying is that you got to come to a place where you learn to let God show and shape you and teach you to know how to maintain what he placed in your hand. And most of the time, he, I say most of the time, I do not say every time, most of the time he will do it through somebody else. The word of God says that by a prophet, the people of Israel were delivered. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Who did that for me? Now you're thinking, a prophet talks about the prophet. At, last time I said, there are two types of prophets. There is the one that speaks the word of God, meaning the one that is written, which way you cannot change again. So the Mormon, they're not prophet because what they receive is not the word of God. You know what I'm saying? The Jehovah Witness and so forth. There is only one word of God that is given. Everybody goes by it, regardless of your stature, regardless of who you are. Pre prepare that for us and then put it on the screen. And then there is a second one that is called the prophet for the voice. Meaning, when you read the New Testament, there were even some girls, seven, seven girls, I believe seven, there were prophetess. Hallelujah. And you look, you will see that there are some prophets that don't, don't even give their name. That they say certain prophets. They don't even identify who they are. But still, there were prophets. There were not the type of prophet who were major in writings, the thought of God concerning the entire world. All of us, whatever you do, the voice of God is what guides you to speak the things to come. But whatever you speak is tied to the word of God. For instance, no prophet can say that the Lord Jesus will come in 2028. There is no way. Regardless on how anointed you are, <laughs> it won't work. Hallelujah. So what I'm trying to say is that the word of God says, give me that verse, please. And by a prophet... The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. The problem is God is the one choosing, for the word of God says in the New Testament, that he's the one who has made for himself, what, apostles, prophets? Hallelujah. So in that order, apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And he says, he is the one who made it for what? For the equipping of the saints. Has a problem. Some people, they don't understand that it is God who made it. So once you start disagreeing with what God made, you are preventing the ways of God and the plans of God in your life. Because the route that God made, you say you don't agree with that. It becomes difficult for you to advance. Are you following? So, God, who sent you to possess the land of your promise, tells you you must also work to maintain it. Sometimes, it will, it will, it will look like a Moses and Jethro. Jethro was not a man of God, was he? The father-in-law of Moses. The Bible says he was a priest of Midian, which is idol worshiper. He has nothing to do with God. But when Jethro came to Moses, he saw Moses, he saw what he was doing, and he told him of a wisdom. He counseled him. Can you imagine? Imagine Moses tells him, me, I hear God. <laughs> me, I see God. Me, I sat with God. Me, I eat with God. He will die before the time. 
You see, God speaks to Moses directly. The Bible says he speaks to Moses as a man speaks to a man. But God did not tell him that. You get it? God knows that Moses needed that specific counseling. That specific wisdom. Instead of revealing to Moses, he said nothing. And he's a pagan that tells him how to run the business of God. People, don't be in the box. Because when you have the spirit of God, even the madman, you can recognize the voice of God in his mouth. The Bible says, those who are with me, my sheep, they hear my, and they, they recognize it. The voice of the Lord does not only come through the anointed one. I repeat again. The voice of the Lord does not only come through the anointed one. There was some people, when you read the word of God, you see that there was some Pharisee who were attempting to kill Jesus Christ. And the Bible said that one of the priests said, ah, we should kill him. Less, uh, um, it's better to kill him than to let the everybody, but you see, he said it's better that one die. And the Bible said that he did not know he was prophesying. <laughs> Meaning, he himself did not know that he was speaking the voice of God. In his heart, he was not the voice of God. In his heart, it was not the intent of God. In his heart, it was jealousy. And yet, he was speaking the things of God. So the voice of God does not come only through the anointed one. But the anointed one can recognize the voice of God anywhere, everywhere. So to maintain your blessings, to maintain your promise that God has given unto you, you must learn to know who God has placed in your life in order to help you maintain and continue. It's important. It is important. The devil works in shady way, and we all know it. Before to arrive, before the word of God comes in your life, the devil will give you pictures of wrong things. Picture of la, hearing of la, sound of la, and then you will hear all kind of a deceit. So by the time the actual word of, come, of God comes, you are kind of like a... You know what I'm saying? And then without realizing you can miss what God is saying at that time because prior it, the devil sent all kind of a bullet. But the Bible tells you, you have to quench the fiery dot of the devil with the sheet off. So it is by faith you must know that God is speaking, not by feelings. It's not, I feel like God say, uh, I know that God says. So he's leading you to understand your destination, to enter your promise, but he wants you to also put in the effort of obeying his voice. And his voice does not only come through the heaven or the roof of your... <laughs> <laughs> of your house. Hallelujah. His voice comes through anyone he chooses and eventually through his word. When you want to know the will of God but you don't look into the will of God for you, you will not know the will. Hallelujah. So how much are you ready? How much are you willing to say, Lord, regardless what is going to cost me, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to stand on. I'm going to like tie it on until I see and I maintain the blessing.
eventually, you have to be careful because the, the key here is when you have a relationship with Christ, you know his voice. This is different from a spirit of criticism. You see, a spirit of criticism is easy. You see problems everywhere. Like you can detect it everywhere, but you don't have the solution. That, that, then you know that's not the spirit of God. The spirit of God sees the problem and brings the solution. Hallelujah. If, for instance, who's called? Let, let me call him. The President Biden. I was about to, I was about to say sleepy, sleepy Joe, but that's not right. <laughs> Hallelujah. President Biden. There are many problems they're, they're, they're creating, right? And you can see it. The pagan also can see it. But the difference between you and the pagan is that you have the spirit of God. So which solutions in those problems that God is telling you? You want to be blessed, you must also learn to maintain the blessing. You want to be blessed, you must learn to maintain the blessing. Now let me give you a principle. A seed of corn that you receive, if you eat that seed, you're going to be broke until you die. Simple as that. A seed of corn that you receive, you plant it. And then he germinates. And then you eat from the fruit of it, but not all of it. So you take some of it and you replant. And when you replant, more comes out and you redo the same thing. By the time you realize one seed becomes million. But if the one seed you have received, you are so hungry, you take it and you eat it, you know with me that you won't have anything else. What it means? A Christian is ready to serve God except with his finances. That's, that's, that's what the Bible call hypocrite. The day God scorned me, I used to give to God only what I did not want. And then maximum I would give to God was one dollar. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't mind. No, honestly. I didn't mind. And I saw that the pagan, such as the Muslim, I saw the Muslim would take the offering and go to church and give the offering. Can you imagine? A Muslim goes to give his offering to church and then you, you think to yourself, why? Because there is a principle that God inscribed. The principle that he inscribed is that whatever you give, he multiplies it, Right? So if, that's the principle. So the seed that you have in your hand, if you planted it, that seed will be multiplied. So even the pagan understood it. They do it for their own, but they understood the principle. But the child of God wants to receive from God without giving to God. And I'm like, and that was me. So when I go, I will worship God. I will do all things. And then when the time arrives, and then I hear, okay, it's a time of giving. And my heart becomes like, oh, I'm not giving again. Ah. <laughs> yes. But I did not realize that I was simply in and out the will of God. I did not realize it. Because I did not like them asking giving. I did not ask, I did not like them asking offering. It bothered me. I wanted to give to God on my own principle. 
It's like the Lord tells to the children of Israel through Moses. He says, tell to Moses, tell to all the children of Israel to bring the gold and the silvers and all they have to build the what? Tabernacle. The Ark of the Covenant. Now imagine, it is God telling him to go tell to the people, gather all you have. Even the slave mindset of the Israelite, they recognize what God said. How much more a child of God that is supposed to be set free by the Spirit of God. One, your finances. Second, your time. I'm talking about maintaining your blessing. You don't maintain your blessing with a machete. <laughs> Hallelujah. So first, your finances. He said he's the one who gives seed to the sower. If you don't want to sow, which seed you're going to give? You get. He said he gives seed to the sower. What, what is a sower? Who plant? Let me put it this let, 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 let me put it this way. It does not give seed to the giver. Meaning, you may have the desire to give, but you never give. You won't receive this, the seed. You have a heart to you want to give, but you never give. You won't receive the seed. The heart that actually puts in action on helping others. That hands receive the seed. So it gives seed to the sower. First principle, maintaining the blessings, the promise. Second principle, live in truth. Second principle, live in truth. When God has given you seed, and then you start down playing around, lying on the seed, you do like Ananias and? It was God who gave them what they had. But they wanted to play around with God, not knowing they were playing with God. They thought it was not a big deal, it's just church as usual. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? If you open your spiritual eyes and your physical eye, you will see the mistake of our forefather that we cannot repre uh, reproduce, repeat. They thought it was just as usual. And they got caught by the Spirit of God. So one, your finances. Two, truth. An upright heart. Do not defraud your brother. Do not defraud your neighbor. I'm talking about maintaining the... Do not defraud your brother and your neighbor. Third principle, assure that the person God has put in your life to help, you help them until they get to their place. Because listen, the resources that God gives you, if he gives you in order to help somebody, if you stop helping the person, the resources also, you follow me? When the United States sends money to some countries in order to do some charities, if the charity who receive the money stop being charitable, the money also stops. For the purpose was not to bless you only. The purpose was to be conducted through you because they saw that your hands has value to build. So God saw in you a builder. And he gives you the tool. Instead of building it, you're sitting on it. You know what I'm saying? So first, your finances. 
He gives seed to a sower. Listen. When we started ministry, because of what people were doing and how people were doing it, the thief in the church, that's how they call them. Because of what they were doing, I did not want anybody to say I am in ministry for the money. So if anybody wanted to give me anything, I said, please keep your money. <laughs> like literally. Because I did not want any math to be on me at all. But I did not understand. I was myself going against the principle of God. So every time somebody wants to bless me, I say, please, no. Uh -uh. And one day, the Lord caught me up. And he told me I was preventing the multiplication of the seed of the people who were willfully handing out the hand. And I thought, oh. But you see, because of my past experience, my misunderstanding of the principle of God, when I came in ministry, I wanted to protect myself instead of letting God protect me. So I said to not have problem with nobody, I don't want any of your offering. So somebody will rise, call me from Australia or from London. I said, please, please, mm -mm, thank you. Mm -mm. <laughs> Keep it. But the day God rebuked me, he didn't go far, the word. You cannot do ministry on your terms. We said we serve God. So we serve his rules and his instructions. His manners and his titles and his... So we cannot do God on our terms. From that day, I learned to not be a brokerage for the people. So people, sometimes, somebody one, one time sent me one cent. Yes. God was trying me. <laughs> yes, the person sent me one cent, not one dollar, one cent. I made sure to keep it and to thank God. <laughs> because you see, God will try you until what is inside of you come out. So one is what? Your finances. You got to be a sower so you receive the seed. Because it gives seed to the sower. Second, what? Be truthful. Hallelujah. Third is what? No. I mean, you are all here, I'm, I'm preaching, and then you don't remember. What's the third time I said? I said third time. <laughs> One. No. One is, two is, be truthful, do not defraud others, and third is, huh? Huh? I didn't say 30 yet. <laughs> yeah? Your time. Your time. Oh, who said that? You say that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Okay. Okay. Amen? So your third, I said your third, third principle, your... Now, let me explain you what time is. With time, you live. With time, you die. Whatever you do inside that time is how you glorify God. The Lord Jesus says this. He says, if you love your father, mother, children, whatever, more than you are not. Have you ever paid attention and ponder on this word? 
I read again. He said, not me, he. He said, if you love them more than me. In other words, we Christians or followers of God, we cannot put our interest before the interest of the Lord. Does it make sense? Let me read again. I can say my family needs to eat, which is, which is good, which is sound. And because my family needs to eat, I put the interest of God aside so that I take care of my family. Before the Lord, it is not right. Or, or am I lying? Because he is the one who said, if you take care of the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, all those other things, so we, we sometimes repeat it, but we don't get it right. We want to be like Martha, do, 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 do. Instead of being like Mary, here, 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 learn. Because there are times God wants to reveal things unto you, but the business of life can get you out of the revelation. And now you have to wait for the next turn. You don't know when. I'm talking about maintaining the promise. I always say this. When God talks about your tithe, is that something that you give to God? No. You don't give your tithe to God. You remit. Let me explain. You don't give your tax to the government. You remit your taxes. Meaning, it's not a willful take it. <laughs> it's, it's not saying, you, you, you don't say government, you know, I like you so much, take my taxes. No. You remit because it is a command is a law. So when you go to work, unless you defraud them, but if you don't defraud the government, when you go to work, your paycheck, they don't send you notice to say, do you want us to take from your paycheck? Uh -uh. They take it and then they send you notice to say, we took it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you see, with what they take, even though they do whatever they do, but you got to realize and recognize with what they take, they build the road, you're running on it. With what they take, they build the road you're driving on. Even if they steal whatever you want to say, but you're still driving on the road, because go in Africa, you will ask me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The road you're driving on, it's like you're dancing. Every one feet, there is a hole. <laughs> and you have to drive like inside. <laughs> you become like a wave. <laughs> so put it this way. Even if they do evil, your concern is not the evil they do. Your concern is what God tells you to do. He said, give to Caesar what belongs to even Jesus Christ paid tax. Hello? You know what I'm saying? Even Jesus Christ, he said, I am the son of the king. We, uh, we, the, 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 the children of the king don't pay tax. But he said, I will have her. So, when it comes to tithe, he's not, you, we give to God. When it comes to tithe, is you remit it to God. So that you can also drive on the road that God does. <laughs> That's why God talks about tithe and offerings. Let me repeat again. Let's say you receive 10,000 and you give your tithe, what? 
1,000. In your heart, you like, I give. I give. No, you didn't. Are you following what I'm saying? Take the book of Malachi chapter 3. Let's read from verse 1. Go ahead. So we're talking about maintaining the promise. First one was your finances. When I talk about finances, I'm talking about the seed so you can become a sower. And you can continue to receive seed. And second, I say it was what? Be truthful, truthful upright. And third was what? Your. So I'm trying to break down on those things. So go ahead, please. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom he seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant mm -hmm. whom he delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming... And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like full, fuller's, fuller's soap. Fuller's soap. He's a refiner. He's going to refine the way you do your stuff. He's going to refine you. Okay? He's going to rebuild you. He's he going to redo you. Because there are certain things that you do that come from your mindset, from your past, from your sins. You feel what I'm saying? You cannot bring your past sins mindset into your new work. If in the past you were doubtful of everything, you cannot serve God being doubtful of everything. Let's go to verse 7. Verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be, but he said, wherein shall we return? Verse 7 says, he tells them, return to me. Now, that's the children of Israel. They're thinking, but we know you. They're thinking, thinking we serve you. They're thinking we are in the covenant. So, how or where and why? What, what, what you're talking about being to return to you? So they ask the question, how to return to you? We think we're already serving you. And then the Lord now we explain, verse 8, he says what? Verse 8, will a man rob God? Uh. Yet he have robbed me. Uh -huh. But he say, wherein have we robbed thee? And he says what? In tithes and offerings. He are Hold on. Will a man rob God? But yet, he affirms they are <laughs> If God caught you thief, you are a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You are in problem. He said, yet ye have robbed me. So when he told them, return to me, they thought... But we serve you. We follow you. We do what you say. So, so how did we go away and astray? He says, well, the return I'm talking about is that you ought to return to me into your what? Your finances. And which type of finances? By doing tight, tight all offering. Tight all offerings. Tight and offerings. Do you know, understand that little word end? In tithes and offerings. Listen. In some countries, that I saw just recently, I think it was in Mozambique. 
the people, they were worshiping God. For they've been worshiping God in the same place for more than 10 years. And you know where the church is? The church is under a tree. Yeah, seriously. Under a tree. And then it means it means just like in the open, there is a tree there. So when they when they say let's go to church, everybody in the village knows where the church is at. Is that tree? So they all come. And they worship God under the tree, which becomes with the leaves, which becomes a little of the, the shade. And they worship God day in, day out, meaning whether it rains or not. When I saw it, I said, Lord, there is a problem with the American church. Because in the American church, they worship God. Only when they are comfortable. You know what I'm saying? But in the same time, those who were worshiping in the tree, they were giving the titan offering. And they worshiped there for 10 years. I mean, more than 10, more than 10 years. They still worshiping there. Listen. I want you to understand very, very, very careful, uh, carefully. The the, uh, the the taxes that you have to remit to the government. If the government used those taxes to defraud people or to kill people or to do war, which they do. Even if you don't like it, you are, you see, pay it. You know what I'm saying? Let me repeat again. Because if you get it right, then you will stop being against the ways of God unknowingly. You will say, no, you know, those churches are gave to the churches and then, and then those churches, they stole the money, those churches, they, yada, 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 yada. Your business is not to be accounting of the... <laughs> Your business is not to be accounting or the giving that you do. Your business is to obey God. Let me break it again. Again, This does not mean that the churches and the people should not be transparent and have accountability. But your accountability is not towards them. It's towards who? Imagine that you sin because you don't like what people did. did your sin, do you, does your sin will be counted against you? So instead of looking at what people did, so you don't do, look at what God says, so you do. So you do not partake in the sins of others. So first, your finances. So it says, will men rob God? And he will say, you rob me in tithes and offerings. There is a man who, he doesn't like give to church. I don't know if it's a real story, but it was a story that I saw. He doesn't like to give offerings. And when he gives, he will give, you know, just the leftover. But if he buy things for himself, he buy those expensive one. Okay. So one day, <clears throat> his pastor came to him. You saw the, the, the thing. His pastor Sam came to him. He says, brother, how much you bought your iPhone 10? So the guy, out of law, thinking that if he says he bought it for 2000 then the pastor will ask him how much you give to the church. <laughs> so trying to cover himself and lie, he said, no, I bought it for um, 200 And the pastor said, ah, here you, here you, here, here. 400, go buy two for me and my wife. (laughs) (laughs) 
After many Sundays, the man is still there. He doesn't know what to do with that. <laughs> Amen. Be truthful. You see, when what God puts in your hand to do his work, you don't do it, you become that type. You defraud the Lord. Listen, my wife and I, it is no, is no mystery or no secret that God told us to give away our house for his worship. You feel what I'm saying? It's no secret. <laughs> because the day he told me that me, myself, I said, uh-uh. I was, not, I was not ready for it. I said, no. Can you imagine? People will come in your house. <laughs> I said, no. I said, worship is not in your house. It has to be in that building over there. Even my brother, when he came here, he saw the house. He said, like, bye-bye. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I said, no, it should not be in the house. It should be somewhere in... In a building with a big cross on, on the front. <laughs> and then, God started now working in us greatly. By the grace of God, since we started ministry, we started to this day. The church does so many things for many people. A church of 10,000 people. There are so many things. We do so many things for many people across the continents. We invest so much. Both. In the, this microphone. If I tell you the price, this camera, this keyboard, you will be like, whoa. We are not cheap. So we invest. Some people, they saw the life. And they came and they saw the house. They said, ah, it is where you worship. <laughs> because when they look at the life, they're like, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So by the grace of the Lord, only by the grace of God. 60 to 70% of everything we receive, we put in ministry. Literally. Sometimes, our last bill, we take it and we serve God. If the church has things to do to help others and we have nothing in the account, we will do it anyway. And I will run to go put money in the bank so that we make sure that the church covers every expenses. So I was thinking and I realized that as we continue to do it, God continues to give us the seed to sow. Because if I don't give you my example, who, are, who, 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 who example would I give you? To let you know whether God is true, which is he is. Do not be afraid to give. The spirit of poverty is afraid to give. You need to ask God to deliver you from it. Because the spirit of poverty thinketh, if I give, I don't know what I'm going to do. The spirit of the son knows that his father is not broke. The day we had to hide our house, the same day the Lord gave me $1,000. 
which 1,000 we use and we had to use in order to pay for the deposit. You remember? And here come a brother from the bushes. <laughs> he come from the woods. <laughs> Suddenly he appeared in my house and in the apartment we used to live in. And he said, ah, so, so, and so, 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 and so, I need 1,000. I say, how come you do not need $999 and you need 1,000? <laughs> how come? That 1,000 God gave me yesterday. And how come the devil has sent you today to ask my 1,000? Do you know it is the same 1,000 I need to take in order to make my house be built? So I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, scatter the plans of the enemy. <laughs> the Lord said, yeah, I scattered nothing. That's my son. I sent him. Give him. I said, what? He said, give him. So I talked to my wife, and we gave him. No longer after, we were sitting. Because remember, in those days, God told me, build me a house. By the day he told me, build me a house, that same day, we were broke. We were broke like a mouse in the house <laughs> of the church. <laughs> no food there. <laughs> and the Lord tells me, as clear as it is, build me a house. And I'm thinking, with what? So, in my mind, is the place we used to live in that Area, German town, there is no land. So you don't build the house there. Where you got to get the land from? So I thought we surely have to buy a house. So we saw people trying to see what it is. And they told us, okay, there is a place we found to buy. And then we have to give the deposit. And the deposit to maintain that house is 1000 You see? I was doing according to my plan. So God made sure to send a brother <laughs> to come snatch it out of my hand so I do not fall into a wrong plan. You know what I'm saying? If he did not send that brother, I would have suddenly given that thing and then we would have been where God did not send us. And you know, when God did not send you somewhere, you have a problem, you never finish. <laughs> anyway, so after that, somebody called us out of nowhere. I was sitting with my wife on the bed. The phone rings. I pick up. The person tells me that he wants to help me build a house. I say, who you are? I hung it, I hung it up. <laughs> are you what I'm saying? The person called again. I hung it up again. I thought it was a scammer. And my wife's like, pick up the phone. So I finally picked it up the whatever time, three or four or five times. And I say, hey. And then we say, well, hey, here, we, we built it. My point is what? My point is that there are certain things that God wants you to do that is outside of your reach. But because you look at your finances, and you look at your paycheck, you are so afraid that you want to keep your paycheck, you get broke. And now when you're broke, now you have to run after the things. And now yeah, you run after the things, now you're stuck in the things you're running after. Your worship of God is being taken away. Maintaining the promise. Do not fool yourself because you feel like. No. Follow the word of God and let the word of God build you. And when you are struggling, let God build you. Your finances, being truthful, and your time that you give to others to help others to arrive where God has sent them.
only three simple principles from the book of Joshua chapter 1. He told them, make sure that you help your brother find the rest. In that, you will have rest. Now you want to ask the Lord to separate you from every spirit of rebellion. You want to ask the Lord to separate you from it. Because see, obedience, there is no better than that. Pride does not send nobody nowhere. But to the way of destruction. So instead of uh, doing, I will say that, <laughs> to <laughs> kickboxing, eh? Hamster wheel. <laughs> eh? I will say la lutte. I will say that. Yeah, wrestle fight. Instead of instead of wrestling, you know when Je when Jacob wrestled with God, that's different though. You know, it's different. Why? Because by the time he wrestled with God, he did not really know God. He was a thief. You see what I'm saying? So if you wrestle with God, it means you are a thief. Amen? But if you are not a thief, stop wrestling with God. Just do the will of God. It's not everything that you understand in the law, but you do it in the law of men. Let me give you an example. And then I do it again. When they ask you to pay your taxes, you don't pay your taxes with a smile on the face. Praising the Lord. Oh, they took my tax. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're actually frowning your face saying, oh, they're taking that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, when you look at your paycheck, you see the gross salary. You feel like you're rich. By the time you see the net salary, you say, I'm broke again. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> and if you go to ask them help, they say, no, you must be poor before you receive the help. <laughs> You are still paying your taxes on your paycheck. How much with the Lord? The only difference is that he's not a wicked king. He's not an unfair judge. He intentionally wants to lift you up and help you keep the promises and maintain them. See, when you refuse to give to God, the devil sends you any kind of stuff, so now you have to pay for it. So you say, no, I don't have enough. And you give one dollar to God. Okay, if it's out of your heart, the Bible says you will praise it. Hallelujah, like the lady who gave only the one penny she had. But if it's out of procrastination, the 10,000 you left in your bank account, the devil sent his agent. Am I lying? The devil sent his agent. Suddenly your stuff are all broken. Now you have to pay money for it. And that money comes from the bank account. They said you refused to give to God. The devil made sure to eat it. But this time, you don't have fruit out of it. Devour it. Now you go pray. Oh, Lord, restore all the here that the cankerworm has devoured. No, you're going to know restore. You gave that to the cankerworm by disobedience, by being cunning with God. i rather see that I gave willfully all I have to God 
knowing that I love him and that he is God over my life, than to see with pain that because I refused, the devil, the devil took it. Ah, come on. Understand the one that you worship. And be willful to obey him. Do not wrestle with God. He will maintain. The Bible says he's able. Remember, he gives seed to the sower. It's not because you sow that you, he gives you seed. Uh-huh. He gives seed to the sower. So he's the one who gave you the job you have. He's the one who gave you the family you have. He's the one who gave you the, 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 the whatever you have. And now that when you have it, don't hoard it. And I finish with the two last. Be truthful. The difference between being truthful and having vision is this. When you have vision, you, you don't have today, and you say, I know I'm having this, I'm possessing this, I'm doing this. That's, that's a faith vision where you know that the Lord will bring you there. But being truthful is different. Being truthful, you broke. And then you act like you have it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's not having vision. If you have something and then you want to share with somebody, do it willfully. Do not do it deceitfully by, by kind of like, let, let me give you an example. Somebody asks you, is bag of rice. And then you have 10 bags of rice. And then you tell to the person, ah, this is the, this is the last one I want. Uh, this, is, this is the last one I have, so take it. You are not truthful. You know what I'm saying? You are deceitful. And I can tell you, if you come from Africa, you know what I'm talking about. Because by the time your forefather in Africa calls you, when I say forefather, even your ancestor calls you, hey, Abi, we don't have money or oh, money coming when? Can you send us uh, at least a 100,000 safer? Mm -mm. And then you're like, ah, right now I'm, 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 I'm have nothing. I have, I mean, right, and yet you have something. <laughs> but so much so you want to make sure that they hear that you have nothing so they will leave you alone. You curse yourself. Hey, I have nothing there. Right now I'm broke, oh, I'm broke, and you have something. <laughs> Just tell them I ain't giving you. That's it. That's all. Uh, just tell them I will get back to you. You did not say when. So you can do like Jesus. You can take thousand. <laughs> because you didn't say when. You just say I'm coming back. You leave it there. Two days after he calls you, when you see the phone, you say, I know. <laughs> <laughs> One week after, he said, my brother, he was just said to say hi. I know. <laughs> I say, I'm coming, wait. <laughs> you know, there is a brother, he called me. He said, I, I need money to do my driver license. I say how much it is. You say one hundred and one hundred thousand and one hundred and fifty thousand French CFA, which is about roughly three hundred, three or four hundred, three hundred. So I told him, "Okay, I will get back to you." One week after, I see a message. Hey, big brother, you was just to say hi. I say, hey. <laughs> reminder. <laughs> Automatic reminder. <laughs> 
So I did like I did not see it. <laughs> I didn't answer because if you answer, he said, Ah, you have seen my message. What you talking about now? One week I haven't seen the honey. <laughs> so I did like, let me wait. When I get something, I will get back to him. I didn't get something. I said, okay, finally I had to, re- I had to answer him. So I sent him a message. I said, ah, I understood. I'm waiting for something. When I'm ready, I will let you know. One week after. <laughs> he was on Google Watch. <laughs> he, 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 he was automatically uh, synchronized <laughs> every week. One week after. He said, when they send you the message and they say, hey, big brother. Oh. <laughs> when they're pressing you. Hey, grand frère. Hey, grand frère. <laughs> when, they say, when they start like that, say, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Because when the guys arrive, ah, c'était juste pour te dire bonjour. Hey! Leave it there. Don't. Because if he arrives in your house and he say, ah, I just get to say hi. Hey! <laughs> But you know you should not be doing that. Amen. So my point is that when you have, don't laugh. Just because you don't want to give. It's better to say, I don't want to give. Or say, I will get back to you later. Or be truthful. Amen. Have it, whatever. But you also have to be open. Because... You may not have the will to give at the time, but if God sent him and you don't listen to what God is saying and you don't give, well, you will have problem. Hallelujah. And the last one, your time. Help others. Be willing to help others. When I was in the world, all my businesses I had People will not come to me for cheap. They knew me. They knew that I was expensive on my cost. I was highly expensive. So businesses will not come ask to my business. No, because they know that by the time they come, they cannot afford our, our um, I would say that, our services. So we were working only with uh, international companies, multinational companies. But if small company come, they already know it's not the way for them. But even in the world, even in my sins, I will still be willing to work for free for them. At the time, I did not know that it was the gift that God has given me, the grace God has given me to have a heart to help others. Later on, when I gave my life to Christ, I understood that it was not just because I was gentle. It was how God built me so that I can be a help for others. But it's also true for each believer. Because he told us, if your brother come and say, I need this bread, this food, and you say, I will pray for you. Why are <laughs> Why are you have the bread and the food? It's not good. Lastly, when I see somebody on Facebook sending a message saying, please, pray for us. And you see people on the writing, praying. When you see it, you must know many of them, the only prayer they did is the word praying that they wrote. <laughs> I repeat again. On Facebook, somebody say, hey, I'm going through tough time right now. I need prayers. Please, people of God, pray for me. And then you see 300 comments. Praying, 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 praying. praying. <laughs> Many of them, 
The only prayer they did is the word praying they wrote. That's it. You are alone in your battle. <laughs> so, find prayer partners that you know they have in you in mind. Not find Facebook prayer partners because you don't know. <laughs> Some of them may be praying, but I can tell you, out of 100 who say praying, suddenly two only praying. So find a partner in prayer. Now, if you marry, your partner is who? Your spouse. You know why? Because you are a house. So you cannot be divided. You cannot let your house and go pray with the house of somebody else. Are you what I'm saying? Let me put it this way. You want to do something. Everybody else I know, but your own house, you are a thief. You are a thief. A deceiver. Because... The value that you give to your own house is not there. And the Lord Jesus told us, a house divided by itself cannot stand. So you cannot leave your house and go trust outside when God gave you a house, a partner, a spouse. Now, if there is fight among you, well, settle the fight and pray. You know, I used to say this. Even if you don't like what your husband or your wife did, even you don't like it, do like this. Baby, come. So, there is conflict, and then you are not agreeing on something, and then you are not happy about something, but... The project God wants you to do needs you both. Even if you don't like whatever, this is what you do. You hold the hand of your spouse. Oh, Lord, thank you. I bless your name. Oh, Lord Jesus, let the project. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. If you want, give back. Hey, Lord Jesus, I thank you. Let bless the. When you finish, bye bye. But pray with your spouse. You see what I'm saying? Because a house divided, you must know, shall not stand. You cannot prosper in a house divided. You can only have some... Eh? Yeah. Crumbles. Those crumbles comes, you, when you put it in your teeth, it goes under your teeth and it's finished, it's stuck there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And now you have to toil, like in Egypt. No, come on. I give you principle of the word of God. So that you'll be reminded that God is the one who first wanted to bless you. You did not call yourself, he called you. You do not love, love him first. He loved you first. And he said he's a good giver. The Bible said that all good things come from the father of lights. He's the one who gives. He says, it is in vain that the builder are building. If the Lord does not Build. What you don't understand about that verse is simple. It says it is in vain that you don't do as the Lord do, uh, as the Lord says. And you do it just because it is in vain. It won't work. So if the Lord says a house divided cannot stop, a, 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 sorry, cannot stand, and then you like, your speed will finish. And then after that, nothing happened. God can prophesy over your life to resurrect the finances and the prosperity. But a house divided 
we scatter it. So, do, do, be, you know, be wise. Be wise. Use techniques, spiritual techniques. All the Lord is asking you is don't be divided. So, as I said, you go, you hold the hand, you pray about the thing. You don't know what God will do. You see, you can be in fight. You can disagree. You can, whatever you want to call. But if you pray. Prayer. We break the wall of division. You feel what I'm saying? Prayer, we break the wall of division. If you need trust in your marriage. But you don't pray together. Trust, we stay outside the door. You will always be, but you don't trust me. Yeah, you are not trustworthy. <laughs> because if even prayer, you cannot do. I cannot trust you about something. You know what I'm saying? Use the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And let God richly prosper you. Let God help you maintain your promises. Now we pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done. We need you. We need you, Lord God, more than ever more. We need you, Lord Jesus, more than ever more. We need you to step in our plate. We need you to step in our lives. Deal with our procrastinations. Take away the resistance that is in our heart. For Lord, not only we want to see the manifestation of your goodness towards us, but we want to tell others that your goodness never ends. So I pray for every family under the sound of my voice. Marriages where the Spirit of God is not glad, is not well pleased. I pray for all those marriages. I pray, Lord God, that you penetrate the hearts of everyone in the marriages and cause them to at least agree around you. If there is anything they cannot agree on, I pray thee that you be the center of everything they can agree on. I pray, Lord Jesus, that businesses that rise and that need, that, that need to rise, businesses that need to prosper, I pray that we agree with your principles and that we not be afraid of obeying your word. I pray, Lord, for ministries, for churches, not be afraid of stepping into the boat and further into deep waters. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, for families. I pray, Lord God, for health. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, for a spiritual life, for prayer life, for study life. I'm asking you, Lord God, that in each lives, right now, right here, you provide every single help where needed. I'm asking you, Lord God, that you provide right now, right here, help where they are struggling. Help where it is difficult. Help where it is tough. Bring them out from every trap and bait of the enemy. Set them upon the tower so that may Lord God lift up their eyes and continue to praise your name. I pray thee 
do it speedily for your people now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.